I'm Yelo, currently working as a postdoc at the Leadership Computing Facility at Argonne National Lab. Today I'm going to discuss about my recent work on the phase stability of titanium dioxide polymorphs from diffusion Monte Carlo study. So this work is in collaboration with many of the instructors of this school. And this work is uh, used the allo uh, allocations uh, through insight on the Titan and Mira supercomputer. Uh, like many transitional metal oxide, the titanium dioxide has abundant phases. It, actually, all the, uh, it has a rich variety of polymorphs existing under various temperatures. You see there are so many of them listed provide this paper, but we are not going to go through, uh, study all of them. We have our focus on the natural existing th um, minerals. So the first three, the rutile, anatase, and brokite. Uh, titanium dioxide polymorphs have a wide range of uh, application. Actually, like rutile, we use them as a dye, and also like uh, for sunscreens, you find them inside. And, uh, and the anatase, actually for its chemical activity, it's widely used for, for photovoltaics and like in solar cells and also photocatalyst for, as a catalyst used for splitting water to generate hydrogen for, for hydrogen fuel per production. And, and uh, uh, more recently, so these, these uh, polymorphs are used to make the resistive switching devices like memory things. Uh, brookite is slightly less used because of the abundance, but uh, brookite is also had very, very good uh, uh, chemical uh, catalytic uh, act, um, properties. So to use those polymorphs widely, uh, commercial, use them commercially and uh, pr uh, produce them synthetically, it is very important to understand the, phase, uh, the stability of the relative energetic ordering of these phases and uh, also like which is the ground uh, state structure. However, theoretical prediction mainly like computational effort and experiments have a long-standing disagreement on the energetic ordering. So we can have a look on, on these details. So from the experiment, actually, uh, it's generally agreed that rutile is the most stable one and transition from anatase and brookite to rutile is irreversible. However, due to the subtle enthalpy change between those phases, it's very difficult to measure them, the, the enthalpy change accurately. So if you look at those experiment data, you, you find the numbers are reported in a very wide range. Uh, for example, the uh, rutile anatase, they, it change. Some of them even change the sign, but they are not so reliable. But these, even those trustable ones have a wide range. Also, it applies to the rutile and brookite. So, but uh, clearly from here, so you see the uh, rutile is more stable than anatase in those reliable ones, and rutile is more stable than brookite. In theoretical calculations, mainly from the DFD calculations, so using the LDA and the many GGA functionals, anatase is always shown the lowest energy uh, solid so, however, we know that those functionals had a limitation for the like 3D ch transition metal below those with the orbitals F shells. So uh, people try to use better ways like uh, the FT plus U method to make the electro electron electrons less delocalized. So people. Uh, However, if you use this kind of method, choosing U is uh, always a big problem or big question for you to consider about. Uh, in the other method, uh, like uh, uh, putting the exact exchange in and using the, those hybrid functionals, uh, it's been shown in many systems they are working quite well. I mean, in transition metal oxide, but uh, to have the phase stability of, uh, uh, how to say, the relative uh, stability of anatase and rutile to, to meet the experimental expect, expectation, you have to put a fraction of hard, hard, uh, exchange, hard, hard to fork part 
to above 70%, which is a huge number because usually we know it's around 20 to 25. Other people consider that maybe there are some missing things like the dispersion interaction in the, in the usual DFT functionals. So they use those DFT plus D schemes to, to take, the into, uh, take that into account. However, this uh, you requires the parameterization. So also uh, some other ca uh, recent calculations show that uh, uh, with, with, with recent calculation with the RPA plus exact change, they found root has the most uh, stable phase. So it's still very controversial. For us, we, we would like to try the fixed node diffusion Monte Carlo to see how uh, our accurate method, how, how it tells us the stability things of those phases. So we know that uh, in fixed node diffusion Monte Carlo that the many body effect with the, with the electron correlation is explicitly included. And for the concerns about the van der Waals interactions, they are usually well treated as many one has pointed if you have correct uh, uh, long ranging behavior of well wave function. And also in, uh, for transition metals, these papers actually, they, they all happened in very recent years, uh, show that the, the, very, the uh, fixed node diffusion Monte Carlo works quite well in those uh, 3D transition metal oxides. So we'd like to see for our problem how it works. So in our uh, fixed node DMC calculation, the wave functions are taken from the DFT plus U because we know that uh, the, the conventional uh, DFT functional has the issue, then DFT plus U uh, improves it. Uh, in, in the DFT plus U calculation, it's in DFT itself, choosing U is a problem, as I mentioned. So you can tune the energetic ordering quite freely on the U. So in their study, actually, they studied the, uh, the U, how the transition happens. So this is the energy difference between root tile and endotase. So the zero means the, the uh, energetic order changes. So if you, uh, if you see this plot for the different value, actually, like the blue lines, they have, they, it's been done with the uh, PB, func PB and LDA functional. You find, actually, the U the transition U value has a huge difference. And there are other uh, different changes you find that actually you get U in, in kind of scattered in a, in a wide range. So what should we believe uh, uh, for, for, for studying the energetic ordering? So there are other ways. Of course, you can take the U from fitting the experiment data. However, it's not a very, I mean, it's not a initial way. Uh, there are other methods like you can do the linear response to determine the U um, directly from DFT calculations. But if you see the data actually I show here, so uh, with the linear response method, uh, for different, I pair them, so for different uh, uh, polymorphs, you, have, you get a different U parameter, which is kind of not so not so nice uh, to me. Uh, I mean, if the sy systems are similar in principle, all, the, all these parameters should be given the same value. So we, uh, so we switch to DMC. Actually, in DMC, as, as we, uh, Paul has already mentioned, so the U becomes a parameter in your wave function. And since the, v, uh, the DMC has the um, variation, actually has the variation principle, so you can determine the U by just minimize the energy and vary the U. So if you go from, uh, do a scan from, uh, from zero to 10, and you do this plot, actually the minimum point is the, the, the U for the optimized wave function. So in our study, actually, I, I found in, three, in all the three polymorphs we care about, uh, we get the same, get the same U within the arrows. So once we optimize the wave function, we can go ahead to study the, uh, the, the, 
how to say, study the respective uh, uh, stability. So, however, we know that in QMC, we have several errors we, have to, we need to control. The first one is the time step error in the DMC. So, I didn't give a plot here, but it shows that the, the energy difference between different phases is independent of the time step. <clears throat> Then this, the other errors is the finite size errors. So uh, for the so there are two finite size er errors you've learned: the one body and two body. The one body we found it only affects actually the smallest uh, uh, cell we use. Uh, so these these data points are, are done with twist averaging. But for the large cells, actually the one body is uh, using gamma point is sufficient uh, to deal with the one body finite size effect. Then the two-body finance, uh, finance size effect, we use those, uh, we try those corrections. But since we are dealing with the energy difference very subtle, we, uh, we, we also not only rely on the correction, we also do this uh, extrapolation. So we did the study on the supercells of three sizes and do the extrapolation to, zero, uh, to, to the infinite cell size. So in the end, we found actually the Using the uh, without correction and using the Kiesa correction, uh, co how to say the, the energies are consistent, and we get the energy difference between annotase and root root tile at a value of one um, one point five millihartree. So through this part of study, we we uh, we, we get the result that from fixed node DMC, DMC calculation. So the annotase is more stable than root tail. Then the root tail broadcast it has the same energy. So we have to think actually if there's other energy component actually we missed. So we are doing the calculation at zero k. So uh, most of those uh, enthalpy studies uh, in experiment are actually done at finite temperature at room temperature. So we'd like to take into account. The, the temperature effect on these uh, uh, on the phase stability of these uh, polymorphs. So we use method of of this uh, quasi harmonic approximation. In this method, so for a given volume and temperature, we we need to calculate the internal energy plus the zero point energy and the uh, vibrational entropy. These are done with the DFPT method, so density functional perturbation method. Uh, but we do an extra correction, so we correct the DFT internal energy with the uh, energy difference of QMC and DFT on the experimental volume, just to, to get the QMC contribution to this. So after adding this, uh, we get the Helmholtz free energy of the, all the three uh, solids. And you find actually, in, in we, we have to look at two regions. This is the zero temperature region and also the transition region. So if you focus, uh, if we look at the, uh, compare the annotase and root uh, tile, so which is the, the second plot, uh, from here, you clearly see that the annotase has lower the free energies than than the root uh, than than root tile. Root tile and the broad is up there. So uh, so even adding the zero zero point energy, though the, the zero point energy close the energy difference between annotase and root tile, but annotase is still the winner. It's still the most stable phase. But the energy difference between brokite and root tile, you find actually brokite is already above uh, above the root tile. So it's shown that actually all the way up to the the it's still below the melting point, but all the way that brokite is less stable than root tile. But uh, for annotase and root tile, it happens at this temperature range. Actually, there's a, a switch of energetic order in root tile becomes more stable at high temperature. So uh, this transition temperature, if you look back to the uh, literature, literature in, in, in experiment, uh, usually they ab uh, observe the, uh, the, the reaction. So when they need to uh, convert the annotase to root tile, they just heat, the, heat a little bit of solid after they, they 
they generate, uh, how to say, synthesized the annotates. Uh, usually the temperature is in this range, but actually uh, a few rep also reported that at low temperature, it's in the, com uh, the transition happens, but takes way longer time. So our, com uh, so, so the extra temperature in the transition boundary actually is uh, kind of uh, need to, the energy, extra energy required to make the transition happen to overcome the barriers. So our uh, temperature is consistent with all the experiments. So come to the conclusion. So at 0K, actually, we have the first energetic ordering. So in this study, we found our QMC uh, energetic ordering for the annotated root tile agrees well with the DFT the conventional DFT calculations, not those uh, kind of fancy DFT calculations. Uh, so DMC, uh, QMC definitely deals well the electronic uh, part of the calculation, but the uh, better wave function is always desired. So we, if we can o optimize further, the orbitals would be better. We have better nodes. Anyway, we have better nodes means we have uh, more, more accurate uh, QMC uh, calculations. So after adding the phonon calculations at the zero K, the, these two, the energetic ordering doesn't change, and it is root tile, and it is still the winner, but the uh, brookite get less stable than root tile and all the temperature above. Then at final temperature, actually, the, there's a, uh, at 650 K, there's a transition. So. Uh, currently, we are doing the phono study with DFT, but uh, I think when the QMC forces comes, we can do the QMC phonons in, in the future. Okay. Uh. Okay. Yeah, well, why not use the static energy from DMC just by itself? Why did you, you, it looked like you mixed the DFT static energy with the DMC results? Yes, so uh, at the zero K, we directly look at the DMC, but when we do the, uh, the finite temperature, those with phonon things, we mixed it. Uh, so uh, it, it's, I mean, we, we can only deal with the phonons with the, at the DFT level. So we add the QMC, the energy difference between DFT and QMC at the experimental structure, experimental temperature as a correction to this. I think it's fairly acceptable. So are you, are you saying that the zero point motion, that's a separate piece, right? So just the static DFT energy, that's all I was asking about. Are you saying that you're only, only when we do this, we, uh, we add this correction. Okay. So I have a question, but thank you again. 